Hello, I'm Lucas Kitchen, and I want to talk to you about our latest video release. It's called, Will a Christian Turned Atheist Go to Hell? If you haven't seen that video yet, you can find it at questionsfromatheist.com. Let me set up the discussion with a hypothetical scenario. Have you, have you ever heard a preacher say, if a person doesn't obey the Bible, they may not be saved, even if they claim to have faith? But then, at a funeral, the same preacher may say, the deceased person was saved because they claimed to have faith, even though they didn't obey the Bible. I noticed this inconsistency when I was in high school, when one of my close friends passed away. So which is it? Do you have to obey the Bible until you die to be saved, or is it enough to have faith at some point in your life? Well, I'm confident that the Bible teaches that once someone is made alive in Christ, born again, and becomes a believer, they have eternal life that can never be lost or returned. That means a Christian who becomes an atheist will still have eternal life. They're still saved, even if they fall into unbelief and disobedience. Now, I know for many of you that might be a new idea. However, it's not an idea I invented, but instead a concept that the Bible teaches quite consistently, in my opinion. So I thought I would take a minute to answer a few obvious questions that the video raises. Some opponents of this idea will say that a true believer will never stop believing. But the Bible doesn't distinguish between true belief and belief. They're the same thing. Secondly, the Bible speaks of saved people who stopped believing for a time. John the Baptist, who was already eternally saved, questioned whether Jesus was the one in the last moments of his life. Even some of the apostles who were already saved stopped believing for a time. A great example is Thomas. If you want to learn more about him, uh, I have a, a new book that I've just finished called Thomas, Hero of the Faith. It's available at Amazon. So if the apostles and John the Baptist could stop believing, then it can happen to modern believers, right? Beyond this, the writer of Hebrews tells us in chapter 3 that a believer can come to the point where they stop believing and even abandon God. When you read Hebrews 3, and I hope you will, you will see that he clarifies a number of times that he is, in fact, talking to born-again, saved, eternal life-wielding Christians. In verse 1, he says, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. That's who he is talking to. Then in verse 12, he reveals that these brethren, Christians, are able to become unbelievers. He says, Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceptiveness of sin. He tells us that the reason that some Christians stop believing is because of a hardening caused by sin. Christians who choose to live in sin become subject to deception. And that wreaks havoc on their ability to continue believing. Doesn't that fit with what you've seen happen to some of your fellow Christians? I know I've seen it. Despite all this, never in Hebrews or the rest of the Bible does it say that a person who has received eternal life can ever lose it. In fact, 2 Timothy 2 tells us that even if our faith fails, Jesus remains faithful. Now, other opponents will say, if you don't obey Christ, you don't really believe. But that doesn't fit with what Jesus said. If belief means obedience, then eternal life could only be given after a person has lived out an obedient life, right? Instead, he said that eternal life is given immediately when someone believes in Jesus, not after they've obeyed. We can see this in verses like John 3.36, 6.47, and 5.24. In each of these, the Bible tells us that eternal life is the present possession of one who has believed. That means that the person who becomes a born-again Christian has eternal life now, currently, in their present state. So, the person who believes in Jesus will live forever. It's a very simple statement. It's exactly what Jesus is saying in these verses. If you believe in Jesus, you will live forever, no matter what, even if you stop believing at some point later. If eternal life is given when one first believes, 
then obedience is not required for salvation. If receiving eternal life required a life of obedience, then Jesus could only give eternal life at the end of someone's life when they'd proved that they could be obedient. But that's not what the Bible tells us. Now, some will say that obedience to Christ is the proof that someone believes or has faith. It sounds good on the surface, but there are a few problems with this claim. It is true that someone's belief in Christ can blossom into good works. In fact, that's what we hope happens with all Christians. We hope that they add good works to their faith. We hope that they not only believe, but obey Christ as well. So if someone is doing good works in obeying Christ, it's likely they're doing that because they have believed in Him. We have to be careful here, though. We can't use good works as proof that someone has believed since it's possible for a believer to disobey Christ. We find that in 2 Timothy 2, 1 Corinthians 3, and a number of other places. You can't prove that someone never believed in the past by how they act in the present. There was a time that I believed it was okay to drink only Coca-Cola all the time. I acted on that belief while I still believed it. However, I now no longer drink Coke all the time. Can you infer from my current actions what I used to believe? Obviously not. The only thing that you might be able to guess about is that I currently believe that I shouldn't drink Coca-Cola, at least not all the time. Even then, I could be acting against what I believe. The point is, trying to use obedience to Christ as proof of faith is a flawed method. Eternal life is not given after a life of belief, but at the first moment one believes. Therefore, present disobedience cannot demonstrate a lack of belief in the past. Some will say that the person who doesn't obey until the end of their life proves they were never really saved. Fortunately, that's not what the Bible says. There was a character in the Bible named Lot, and Lot's last mention in the Bible is one in which he's living in debauchery. Yet the Bible indicates he was saved in 2 Peter 2, 7-9. By the end of his life, King Saul was disobedient to God, and he actually committed suicide. Yet he was saved, as it tells us in 1 Samuel 28, 19. Solomon, who wrote a lot of the Bible, finished his life unrepentant and disobedient to God. Yet the Bible indicates he was saved in 1 Chronicles 28, 6. There are lots of crystal clear verses from the Bible that tell us we must have faith in Christ alone to be saved. And once we are, we can never become unsaved again. There are a handful of verses that get used to confuse believers into thinking they can lose their salvation if they don't behave. Here's what I'm proposing you do. Look first at the verses that are very clear. There are scads of them. A great place to start is in the Gospel of John. In fact, it's my opinion that you should stop reading any other book in the Bible until you are extremely familiar with the Gospel of John. John is the only book in the Bible written to unbelievers to show them what they have to believe in order to have eternal life. The bottom line is, if you believe in Jesus for eternal life, you have it. No matter what happens after that point, you still have it. An atheist's current unbelief doesn't negate salvation received earlier in life. A believer's future unbelief or misbehavior can't dissolve, destroy, or derail their deliverance from hell. Even if the Christian strays, that can't sabotage, subdue, or stop salvation. So, all of that and much more is why we made the video, Will a Christian Turned Atheist Go to Hell? Thanks for watching. I want to remind you to subscribe, like, and share if you found this video valuable. One more note, it takes resources to produce videos like this one and the others you'll find on our channel. I hope you might consider supporting the work we're doing. You can do that by becoming a patron through patreon.com slash lucaskitchen. You can find a link to that in the comments or description below this video. To see more videos like this one, visit us at questionsfromatheist.com. Thanks for watching.